It was opposition day in the House and it was the Conservatives' turn to choose the topic of debate, which, as you heard, was about the carbon tax. Poliev continuing his call for the Trudeau Liberals to kill scheduled hikes to the carbon tax in the new year. And to discuss the matter, we are now joined by Rachel Bendayan. Uh, Ms. Bendayan is the Liberal MP for the riding of Outremont, Quebec. She is also the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Tourism and an Associate Minister of Finance. Michael Barrett is the Conservative MP for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes in Ontario. And for the NDP House Leader, Peter Julian, who is also the Member of Parliament for New Westminster Burnaby in British Columbia. Hello to the three of you. Hi, Michael. Good to Hello. be here. So, uh, Mr. Barrett, I'm going to get you to start us off here because it is your party that chose the carbon tax to be debated on this opposition day. What is at issue for your party? What would you like to happen here? Look, this is all about affordability for Canadians. It's a time when uh, we're seeing uh, record inflation that's hammering Canadians, 10% year-over-year food inflation, 4 in 10 Canadians making really tough choices about what they're able to afford to feed their families every month, right on the cusp of uh, the season where everyone turns their furnaces on at home, and they're not able to make ends meet before they start getting those home heating bills in one of the world's coldest climates. So uh, on the uh, on Taking a look at all of that, we're on the verge of um, taxes going up with a paycheck tax in January. And we've heard, of course, from the government that they're going to triple the carbon tax, which on home heating, on, uh, on you know, fueling up your vehicle, but also um, raising the price of everything from farm to table, um, this, this is not the time to be raising taxes on Canadians. Uh, Ms. Bendayan, how do you respond to that? Because you add to what we heard from Mr. Barrett, uh, the, the, the report from the Parliamentary Budget Officer back in March, which basically said that, yes, rebates will be coming to lower income Canadians, but for those who are more middle class, who are uh, perhaps uh, receiving a higher income, at the end of the day, they'll actually be, be paying more with every monthly bill. Well, thanks, Michael. And, you know, I must say it didn't come as a huge surprise for the Conservatives to use their first opposition day motion to attack, you know, climate policy while we're facing a climate emergency. But it is disappointing that they're trying to spin it as somehow an affordability measure when it's absolutely not. The the Parliamentary Budget Officer, the PBO, um, that you just referenced, uh, confirmed that 8 out of 10 Canadian families actually receive more money back in our climate credit than they do pay. Every single penny of the, the price on pollution that is collected goes back to the jurisdiction um, that it was taken from. Uh, this is absolutely climate policy in action that actually works. You know, economists have said that a price on pollution is the most effective way to attack climate change. We are less than 48 hours since Hurricane Fiona touched down. I think Canadians are smart. They realize that um, failing to do anything on, uh, on climate is going to cost us much, much more in the medium and long term. Uh, one other thing that I, I, I would just I would just say is that it's so unfortunate that that my colleague, Mr. Barrett, who's sitting next to me, has called our price on pollution a Ponzi scheme. I mean, it is absolutely irresponsible and, and pretty rich coming from the Conservative Party that's been promoting cryptocurrency as a way to opt out of inflation. Mr. Julian, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on this, though, because, you know, uh, I understand what the, the point that Ms. Bendine is making here, but for, for the vast majority of Canadians, what they see is not so much the carbon tax, but how they have to find an extra dollar to pay for gas, to fill their car, to go to work. How do you justify uh, an increase in carbon tax when so many Canadians are already struggling with the cost of living right now? Well, well first off, uh, people are struggling with the cost of living. That's absolutely true. That's why Jagmeet Singh and the NDP have pushed the Liberals to actually put in, in, in place legislation that provides for dental care, provides for a rental supplement uh, that'll help nearly 2 million Canadians. And the Conservatives yesterday said that they were going to basically rip up the bill, which is completely irresponsible. So I question the sincerity of the Conservatives when it comes to affordability, that they would do that at a time when Canadian families need more supports is, is pretty hypocritical. But those I are, say, if you I, allow me, I'm sorry, Mr. Julian, if you allow me, those, those are targeted benefits, though. It does not necessarily benefit a, a middle-class family that is still, as well, struggling to find the dollar to pay for the cost of living. It will help almost 2 million Canadians. Uh, the GST bill will help about 12 million Canadians. Uh, a lot of Canadians that are helped by what the NDP and Jagmeet Singh have pushed the government to do. Now, that being said, when we talk about 
putting a price on pollution, it, it is one tool among many. And I do know that the Liberals, have, have, on the one hand, have put a price on pollution, which I, I think is a good thing. But on the other hand, are continuing to give massive subsidies to the oil and gas executives. And, and this is one of the big problems with inflation. We're seeing greedflation, as so many people have referenced. Uh, food, food prices that are through the roof as food, food companies, grocery companies have record profits and oil and gas companies have been the same jacking up prices and we actually need a federal government and that's not going to be liberal or conservative it takes action against that type of, of profiteering at a time when so many canadians are struggling now mr barrett if not a carbon tax because beyond the cost of living there is the environmental issue of course that's what the carbon tax is meant to address how would you address climate change well, we're not going to tax Canadians like the uh, Liberals would do. They're not meeting the targets that they've set with their tax, and that's why they need to triple it, because it's the, they say it's not effective enough. So they're going to punish Canadians with higher taxes for their failures when they could employ many technologies that would affect a uh, in, a, in a great way, have, a, have a, a reduction on global and domestic greenhouse gas emissions. A small modular reactors are one. We also have um, LNG is a, an abundant resource that we have in this country. Um, we had all kinds of projects that were uh, approved under the last Conservative government that none of them have come to pass under the Liberal government. And we, we've seen the effect of having countries who rely on dictatorships uh, for their energy. We see that with Russia cutting off gas to our allies in Europe. Quickly, we Mr. See, Barrett. And, and we see that with, you know, a Canadian, uh, Canadian fuel. We're, we're importing dirty dictator oil instead of, you know, using a clean Canadian energy. And Ms. Bendayan, how do you respond to that? Why not technological advances rather than a carbon tax? I say let's do both, and that is exactly what our government is doing. We are uh, we are moving forward on nuclear. We are moving forward in, in innovative and new ways. And putting a price on pollution actually spurs innovation. Economists are unanimous on that point, and that's why it's important to keep the price on pollution, not to scrap it like the conservatives would have us do, and also keep our climate rebate. It's putting over six hundred dollars in the pockets of a family of four in Ontario, over nine hundred and fifty dollars in Alberta. This is real money that the conservatives are going to take away from Canadians by scrapping the price on pollution. Uh, Mr. Julian, last word to you, less than a minute here. Is there any way to make a carbon tax easier on the average Canadian? Uh, yes, and that's why the NDP has pushed for these other supports to make sure that uh, we, we are supporting Canadian families at such a critical time. The NDP has been the only party in the House uh, really pushing this issue of support for regular families. But I, I will say this, last summer, just over a year ago, over 600 people in my region died from the climate change linked uh, heat dome. We saw BC cut off from the rest of the country because of the atmospheric river that hit in the fall now with Hurricane Fiona. People died in Atlantic Canada. Both the Conservatives and the Liberals have not taken climate change seriously, and we need to have a government that will make sure that we are transitioning through a just transition strategy to the clean energy economy that it really has to be the, the path for the future for Canada and for the planet. Okay, Ms. Bendai and Mr. Baird, I know you want to answer to that, but unfortunately we're out of time right now. But our thanks to the three of you. No doubt we will pick up the conversation again later in the season, but for now, thank you to the three of you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Michael.